What's up guys? This is Chris here from East Coast PC and welcome back to the channel. Today we have the ASUS ROG Strix B550F gaming Wi-Fi motherboard here with us. We're going to be taking this thing out of the box. We're going to be going over all the great features it has, talking about the VRM, the connectivity, the I.O., and just talk about why each and every one of y'all might be considering this motherboard for your next build. We're going to be also talking about who this motherboard is probably for and who it might not be for. Before we get started, if there's anybody who isn't subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Hit all on that bell icon so you get notified when we drop new videos. Drop a like, comment, do all that good YouTube stuff. We appreciate each and every one of y'all and, and thanks again to all of our supporters. With that out of the way, let's get started. All right, guys, we are back. And first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna just go over a real quick overview of what's in the box here. Uh, first things first, we have uh, four SATA cables, six, SATA 6G cables, and uh, two of them are 90 degree right angled, and then we have two standard uh, SATA cables. Okay, then we have the all important uh, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth antenna. This motherboard comes with Wi-Fi 6, uh, which is two by two multiple user MIMO compatible uh, and also Bluetooth 5.1. We have a three pin RGB addressable extension cable. We have some zip ties, little M.2 screw pack, and basically some little square sticky things that you could stick a RGB controller or fan controller or whatever up to your case with. And also the manual, the all important manual, RTFM guys. So now that that's out of the way, I will slide this over here and we will get to what everybody came to watch this video for. Now this motherboard here, guys, I think uh, is a excellent, uh, I think it's a good value for, for a very good motherboard that, that we can expect to be a very good, reliable motherboard and have a lot of connectivity for the price. So the first thing we're gonna start with, guys, is right here on this back panel. Right here on the back panel, we have our Wi-Fi and Bluetooth uh, connections for our antennas. We have our 5.1 channel audio. Uh, also, we have our optical audio right down here. We have our HDMI 2.0 and our DisplayPort 1.2. Now, one thing I do want to say, guys, on the spec sheet of this uh, motherboard, it says HDMI 2.1, but then beside it, it says 4K at 60 hertz. <clears throat> now, I am 99% sure that's a mistake that it is not HDMI 2.1. Uh, for one, 4K 60 hertz, that's uh, the, basically what um, HDMI 2.0 does at 18 gigabytes per second. So if anybody's looking at that and thinking this is a HDMI 2.1 port, I don't know why it says that, but I, I don't know of any motherboard on the market that has a HDMI 2.1 port. They're expensive and I highly doubt, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's just a type of error on the, on the website there. So anyway, um, up here guys, we got a total of four USB 2.0, or excuse me, four USB 3.0, five gigabits per second ports. They are the blue ports. Then we have two USB 2.0s up here at the top. Then we also have uh, two USB 10 gigabits per second ports, which will be technically USB 3.2 uh, Gen 2. And we have one of those that are type C and one of those that are type A. So for the back panel, guys, that uh, covers everything except for at the top, this BIOS flashback button. Now, a lot of you probably already know this, but what that's used for. So if you buy this motherboard and it does not come uh, ready for a Ryzen 5000 CPUs, you basically can just uh, download the BIOS, put it on a USB stick, stick it in here in that uh, little USB port that says BIOS, and you can hit that BIOS flashback button and it will update your BIOS without any CPU and memory in there. And then you can drop your Ryzen 5000 series CPU in there. Uh, so that's uh, basically a feature you've got to have on these uh, Ryzen motherboards uh, if you don't want to get in a bind, if, especially if you're using a Ryzen 5000 CPU like so many of you will be buying this motherboard to use with. So that's good, we're all covered there. All right guys, so when we come right around here to the motherboard here. What we have up top here for our VRM, we have a 12 plus two VRM phase design. Okay, now it comes with a, uh, it's only a six phase va uh, voltage controller, but the way that it does that, it has three phases, I mean, three chokes or three uh, power stages per phase. 
So we have all the um, power stations are 50 amps a piece. So we have plenty of p uh, power capacity on this motherboard. Uh, basically, so you have three power stages per phase. So basically you have, is, you can think of it one way as having one big 150 amp power stage per phase. So even though it's a true four plus two phase, uh, it's, it's set up in a 12 plus two teamed power design that Asus has been using for many years. It works good. You get good transient response and it's good for overclocking. It's good for stability. It, it just works. And that way they don't have to use doublers. It cuts costs down. And like I said, it, uh, it, it just, it just works a lot better in some ways. So we do have, uh, three power stages per phase. We have, uh, it, it's, it's, um, a 12 plus two design. So basically you have 12 power stages for the V-Core and two for your SOC. So with that out of the way, the next thing guys, uh, we got our, our dim slots over here, guys. Of course we have four dim slots over here, um, capable of good high speed memory overclocking. I don't know the exact thing that's on the box. I think it's around 5,000, but um, it, basically you can pretty much guarantee if you're only using two sticks you you should be able to get pretty close to the max one stick should get you there it does come with a six layer pcb this motherboard uh most i think i think just about all x570 motherboards are six layer pcbs due to the pci express 4.0 but anyway you should be able to get uh, most of what it says on the box out of the memory however i do not recommend doing that i recommend getting uh, 3600 megahertz memory if you want to go low latency that's great that's what i'm doing for my new build but i do not recommend using high extreme high speed memory with ryzen because if you do that you go out of sync with the memory controller the u-clock and the, the, basically the max guaranteed speed that you can run with all these cpus is 3600 megahertz uh with your memory controller your memory and your infinity fabric all of that being in sync because when you go say you wanted to run ddr 4800 or ddr 4400 whatever what you would be doing is you would be going you would be moving to a one to two ratio and you would lose a lot of performances there's a performance penalty there's basically no advantage to doing that maybe uh maybe some extreme overclocking or something like that but for everyday users you want to stay at whatever the max speed that you can stay at while keeping everything in sync all right guys so uh, as far as connectivity on this motherboard we are in pretty good shape guys so this right here is our by 16 slot these 16 lanes are coming directly from your cpu now this right here down here th this motherboard does not support sli of course there uh, there is some high-end b550 motherboards that do support SL sli but uh, if you're going to be doing basically nobody uses that anymore but if you are going to be doing that i recommend going with a uh, better x570 motherboard but anyway the 16 lanes here coming directly from your cpu down here this is a pci express uh 16 slot it's only 3.0 because everything that's coming from the chipset is 3.0 that's the one of the biggest differences in b550 and x570 so if you don't have to have a uh, pci express 4.0 that's a good reason why you should be looking to say you you know it might be a good idea for you to save some money on a b550 motherboard so the the two things that are pci express 4.0 are your your 16 lanes that's going directly to your gpu and your four lanes that's going directly to your m.2 that's coming directly from the cpu now this bottom m.2 and all of these pci express slots that we're talking about right now they all conform to the pci express 3.0 standard so your bottom m.2 slot is pci express 3.0 by four and this slot right here that we were talking about it is pci express 3.0 by four it's a 16 slot but it's only wired for by four electrically now something you do need to note a lot of people look over this and hopefully this will help somebody catch an arrow in this video because a lot of people buy these motherboards and think that you can just plug everything in and everything works at uh, full speed and that's that's not how it works especially on b550 so we have four lanes total for for this slot right here but if you run all, if you run this slot at, at the full width, it'll, it'll run it at PCI Express 3.0 by four lanes, then all three of these PCI Express 1.0 slots are gonna be disabled. You're not gonna be able to use any of them. So you can use all of these at one time, but what'll happen is if you, you can basically have four PCI Express 
3.0 buy one slots. The three right here that are actually buy one, and then this one up here is gonna, you're only gonna get buy one connectivity if you start plugging any of these three in. If you plug any of these three in, then this one automatically goes to a buy one connectivity, and you can use all four slots. But that's just something to note, guys, uh, and just keep that in mind if you're uh, planning on populating right many of these slots. Um, like we just talk, talked about this, uh, this M.2 slot down here, this does come off the chipset along with all of these, uh, these PCI Express slots right down here. Okay, one thing to note here though, is it does not matter what kind of M.2 uh, drive you plug in here. I always recommend using PCI Express NVMe drives because I, I feel like it's almost a waste of the slot to use a SATA drive because they're so close in price now, and why you know you can you can hook up a, a SATA drive to your regular SATA port. So why waste? Since we only got two drives, I, I recommend keeping this one open for PCI Express drives. But the one thing to note is, guys, it don't matter what kind of drive you put in here. No matter what, you're gonna lose two SATA ports. So when you populate this with a SATA or a PCI Express 3.0 by 4 drive, you are gonna lose two SATA ports. So if you do that, then we'll, we will have four SATA ports that will be active instead of six SATA ports. That's just something to know. It, a lot of, four is plenty for a lot of people, but it's just something to keep in mind. Um, over here, guys, as far as uh, front panel connectivity, we have our USB 3.0. Uh, technically, the new term is USB 3.2 Gen 1, five gigabits per second port. So that's good for two USB uh, five gigabits per second ports that go to your front case. Um, this is our 24 pin connector, of course. Up here, uh, we do have our standard eight pin uh, EPS connector, and then we have an additional four pin EPS connector. You do not have to use this uh, four pin if you're, if you're using one of the higher end CT CPUs, a uh, 5900X or 5950X, I definitely recommend plugging it in. It can't do nothing but, uh, but help you. A lot of people say, oh, well, you don't need it. And you do not have to have it. It will not, nothing will work if you only plug the four pin in. Uh, to my knowledge, but um, the, the eight, you can just run on the eight pin. That's what I'm gonna be doing in this build. I'm, I'm putting a 3700X in here for a customer of mine. Uh, um, but, uh, you know, like I said, if you're using one of the higher end CPUs, I definitely recommend uh, plugging both of those in, the eight pin EPS and the four pin EPS. And it's definitely nice to have that. A lot of motherboards don't, a lot of cheaper motherboards don't have that. It's definitely nice to have that to, to know that we're giving plenty of power to the CPU whenever it's needed. And so it won't pull so much strain on that one eight pin. So when you do that, it's gonna, it's gonna, you know, take part of the load from that four pin and it's just gonna keep your wires a lot cooler. So um, down here, as far as connectivity goes, guys, we have uh, two USB 2.0 connectors. They are for our front panel connectors for USB 2.0 ports on our front panel. And they're also used for a lot of uh, companies like Thermaltake and stuff like that are using, using these um, USB 2.0 internal headers. They're using them for their RGB controllers and stuff like that. So we have two of those. That's just about standard on every motherboard. Um, as far as uh, RGB goes, guys, we have three RGB headers, one up here, one up here, or one down here, and one down here. And yes, yeah, so I believe that's 12 volt. There's 12 volt. Okay, so yeah, I wanted to make sure I got that right. I didn't tell y'all wrong. So only one of them uh, headers is addressable, guys. This one up here is 12 volt, and that's just for standard RGB. Uh, one of them down there is 12 volt, and that's just standard RGB. And then we have one 5 volt, 3 pin addressable RGB header. So uh, that's just something to keep in mind. It, it just make sure if you if you were planning on having two addressable headers. Also down here, guys, we just got uh, all the little thermal sensors, uh, fan controllers, all that good stuff. We have multiple fan controllers all around the board. So up here we have uh, your CPU and your CPU optional. Right here we have a your dedicated plug that's uh, made to go directly to your AIO, your closed loop cooler. And then also behind that we have a, a, a standard chassis fan as well. And then we have a few more uh, scattered around the board. We have the one down here and yeah, so we have two right here at the bottom also. And guys, that just about covers everything for this board, I believe. Uh, I think we I think we have covered most of the important details. 
I'll just spin it around like that one more time so you guys can see it good, see the back, see the back eye good. Um, one thing I do want to mention, guys, is the price for this motherboard. The price for this motherboard, uh, I paid two hundred one ninety nine or something like that, but two hundred one or, or two hundred and two U.S. dollars, something like that, on Amazon the other day. Now, if you don't want the Wi-Fi version, of course, this comes with Wi-Fi six and Bluetooth five point one. If you don't want the Wi-Fi version, guys, you can definitely uh, save about thirty bucks sometimes, especially when it goes on sale from New Egg uh, on a Shell Shocker deal, and get the regular B five fifty the the asus rg strix b550f gaming that's not the wi-fi version uh if you don't need wi-fi if you do need wi-fi i think it's not a bad deal to step up uh you know pay extra 30 bucks have wi-fi and bluetooth 5.1 built in but if you don't need it you can always save that extra 30 dollars so one thing i want to say guys i think that's a good price for this motherboard uh or, or it's a fair price i am a big fan of asus motherboards i have been using uh, asus for years but Actually, the last three builds uh, of my personal computers have been Gigabyte, my Z270, my Z370, and uh, my Z390 build that I'm currently using behind me right now. And I will say Gigabyte makes some good hardware. They, they do usually make good solid hardware with good VRMs and a lot of good features. The only issue I have with them is, is their BIOS. And it's so hard, it's, it's a lot harder for especially a novice user that's just getting into PC building to figure out asus's bios is so much more friendly i could in so many scenarios i could almost walk a computer newbie through uh write many things through an asus bios where it would be a complete nightmare trying to tell anybody uh, about the gigabyte bios it just, things are just scattered all over the place and it has gotten a, it has gotten a lot better it's not that bad and it's not bad for somebody like me uh, but that's one reason I recommend a lot of Asus motherboards is they just got excellent quality control and they have an excellent BIOS. And when you have those two things, you usually have a good platform to start off from. So one other thing I want to mention before we end this video, guys, is the price for this motherboard, like I said, is about 200 bucks. Now, that is about the most I uh, recommend spending on a B550 motherboard because once you get into the $250, $260 territory, like they have uh, the the b550e gaming motherboard that's ahead of this one it has a little bit more beefed up vrm it's got 14 plus two phases instead of 12 plus two phases and uh it, it has a few other features as well but the issue with that is you know once you start paying well over 200 dollars for a b550 motherboard you're better off to get a, a better get a something like a msi unify uh, motherboard it's like it was three hundred dollars i think it went up a little bit now but that was an excellent uh excellent buy for a motherboard that was a, that's an x570 board a msi x570 uh, unify the standard atx size one and you know you get a lot more connectivity with x570 b550 is enough for most people for a lot of the people but i do not recommend spending much more than two hundred dollars on a b550 board guys just always remember that when you're doing your shopping and remember that the biggest thing is the x570 comes with pci express 4.0 from the chipset so all of these lanes down here that we talked about that are 3.0 they turn into 4.0 on x570 and the other big kicker is connectivity so this these usb ports right back here are are you know they're they're going to be enough for a lot of people out there but for somebody like me that's creating content that's doing all kinds of pc work i do need more usb ports than that, than that. and my new asus x570 dark hero motherboard uh, has me covered because i literally have 12 usb ports on the back you know just a lot more connectivity so that's when you would want to think about going to x570 and if you don't need all that stuff and you want a premium b550 motherboard that has a lot of the features of x570 this is one of my go-to motherboard along with the b550f non-wi-fi version if you if you know for a fact that you don't need the wi-fi and bluetooth so guys that that's gonna about wrap this video up guys um glad i got to take this out of the box and show it to everybody today i want to thank each and every one of y'all if y'all still hanging in watching this video thanks again thank each and every one of our supporters if there's anybody who ain't subscribed to this channel please hit that subscribe button drop a like comment do all that great youtube stuff and we will see you guys in the next one thanks again